one of the stories that's garnered a lot of attention on our news outlet over the last few weeks, uh, particularly in the Midlands region of South Carolina, is the Blonde Dock saga. Now, this is the story of former Lexington Medical Center family physician Kim Hawks. Now, this story has a lot of layers to it. Uh, Hawks made a social media post over the Christmas vacation, which uh, set off a lot of fireworks also prompted an investigation by the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division into allegations of domestic violence uh, that she leveled against her husband, who is a Richland County Sheriff's deputy. Now, as this story unfolded, we learned of allegations which were made against Dr. Hawks. Uh, some of those allegations from former patients were incredibly sensitive. And so our news outlet has been trying to find the best way to cover those, to give you the most important information uh, particularly as they relate to an ongoing investigation into Dr. Hawks by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Now, one of Dr. Hawks' victims, alleged victims, sat down with us recently. Her name is Whitney Baxley, and she has alleged that Dr. Hawks groomed her, manipulated her, and ultimately engaged in a relationship, an affair. Uh, while she's married, while both of them were married, as a matter of fact, now, this story has the potential to develop into a tabloid, tawdry type tale, uh, but at Fitz News, I wanted to get away from that. I wanted to focus on the more important issues, which were allegations of physician misconduct uh, and, again, the bigger law enforcement investigation into the domestic violence allegations. That's what we tried to do from the beginning of this saga, but I also felt it was important to just stop what I thought was important, tell them what I thought was important, and let the alleged victim in this case tell you her story in her own words. So with that, let's hear from Whitney Baxley. When I graduated college, I went to Winthrop and I moved back home. I needed a doctor and I believe um, my mom's doctor recommended Dr. Hawks because she had just started and she was accepting new patients and she was like a young woman and um, somebody that I could trust being a young woman myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And so I started seeing her and it wasn't until after I got married that we got close. And I believe the first time we actually like hung out, um, she was looking for somebody to do family pictures for her and her twins and her husband at the time, Kevin. Um, and my husband was a photographer. And so that was the first instance of us hanging out and me having her phone number and stuff. So you established a relationship outside of doctor patient right and that was in i would say 2012. okay obviously that connection last fall started to deepen and we'll get into her relationship with her now estranged husband in a moment but there's also a relationship that existed between the two of you tell us a little bit about let's just go back to last fall Tell us how everything started. Between October 7th and October 23rd, she had me and her other best friend Kelly convinced that John was abusive. And that night I was at a Halloween party at my neighbor's house and Kelly called me and said, um, John's yelling at Kim. I really think you need to go get her. Um, we need to do like a welfare check on her because she's not responding to my text messages. And she only lives two miles down the street from me. So I was like, all right, but um, I wanna have you on FaceTime because I'm not really comfortable going over there by myself. And so she was on FaceTime and I was like, you can talk to John cause y'all have a better relationship than us. Cause I kind of distanced myself from him after the night of the party. And so, you know, I have on video where we go to the house and um, Kim's like, yeah, he's yelling at me. I think I wanna leave. And so Kelly's like, we'll just spend the night with Whitney that night um, and just like spend the night apart and figure things out. And this is October 23rd. Okay. And when I picked her up, she, she, it was like she was on the war path. Um, she had me drive to Lexington Medical 
um, the Lake Murray family practice and she went in and just like kind of like raided the place, like the supply closet, the medicine closet. She stole two insulin syringes because she wanted to kill John with them and Kevin, her ex-husband. And I've got those in these text messages of where it states if I had she my- She texted that to you. Yes, if I had my insulin syringes. So that <clears throat> really was before anything happened, but when I got her back to the house that night, um, she started making out with me and I was like, what are you doing? And she kind of confessed her love for me and said that she's been in love with me for a long time, but she didn't know how I felt about it. And I was like, um, I'm married, I'm not a lesbian. I was like, you're married, are you a lesbian? And looking back on it, I can tell how she groomed me and brainwashed me the night of the party, going back to October 8th, um, when she was getting ready, like she just got completely naked in front of me and I just kind of like turned my head like while she was getting dressed and she was, was, she's really obsessed with swingers and she kept bringing up swingers and how all of Lexington real estate agents are swingers and she was like, did you know that? And I was like, no, you know, I'm a little sheltered, naive, church going, Southern Baptist girl who's lived in Lexington all of her life. Like, I don't know about these types of things because I don't, I don't want to say associate with these types of people. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But that's right. not the crowd I run with. I mean, I don't even have a crowd I run with. I literally have two people. Um, I don't have time for friends because I have four children. And one of my, my youngest goes to four or five therapies a week and one's in Augusta, Georgia. So I don't have extra time to like hang out with people. Um, and she was telling me about one of the girls that was coming to the party that night she, that her husband likes to watch her have sex with other men and how strange that was. And at the time I just kind of was like, okay, that's weird. And she played it off like it was weird too. But looking back at it, I can tell that was her like feeling me out, you know, um, to see my reaction on how I would take that kind of information if I was into it or not. This particular time, I was at a very low point in my life and she knew that and she pounced like she's a predator and I'm a victim and I didn't realize all of it until she did what she did to me. And it was like, like I'm, I'm sad that it happened, but I'm glad it happened because had she not done everything she did to me, I would have never seen her for the monster that she is. You know, I would still be Team Kim and I would have her back and I would still be doing her dirty work for her but because she did what she did, the veil was taken from my face and I was able to see it for face value and able to distance myself from her. You've used the word affair. You've used the word relationship. And again, not discounting <clears throat> grooming behavior or those sorts of allegations, but there was a part of you that did want it, that did participate. I did participate. Um, I'm not saying I wanted it because I didn't. Mm -hmm. But again, when you're groomed and you're brainwashed and she has the established pattern of behavior of doing what she's done to me, I mean, she used and abused me mentally, emotionally, financially, sexually. Um, I mean, me and my family just mm -hmm. abused us, took money from us. Um, I gave her $2,000 that she refuses to give back to me um, because she painted this sob story of John shut down our bank account. I don't have access to any of our money. I can't make my car payment. 
turns out John never shut down the bank account. Like mm -hmm. it was just all these fabricated lies. But at the time I believed her mm -hmm. and I wanted to help her. So right. is your belief, Whitney, that Kim's allegations against her estranged husband, uh, John Hawks, is your contention that, that those allegations are fabricated? 100%, I know they are. I've been close enough with them for long enough and also documented these text messages and lawyers conversations. When she lived with me, we went to two different divorce lawyers because she wanted to get a divorce from John, supposedly. Mm -hmm. And I recorded those conversations and they point blank asked her, has John, is there any abuse? And she said, no, never. Mm -hmm. And even when we went to court, because they took out restraining orders against me, we went to court November 17th and she testified under oath, my husband has never touched me. Mm -hmm. And so I know for a fact that all of that is fabricated. She's playing the victim because that's what she does. Mm -hmm. She has everyone fooled. She, everyone thinks she's on the run because somebody's out to get her. She's not on the run, but we are out to get her. LLR, DHEC, SLED. There's massive investigations going on from her, and John's the scapegoat to cover up the investigations on why she had to resign, but she resigned because she abandoned my family. So Lexington Medical, from my understanding, basically gave her the choice, you have to resign because you abandoned an entire family because she didn't follow protocol. She just deleted herself from my twins, my charts, and left us hanging with no doctor. Obviously some pretty intense stuff. Now, in the aftermath of that interview, this news outlet has obtained some documents from the Department of Health and Environmental Control investigation. One of those documents is a written statement from Dr. Hawks that was issued just a week before her resignation. Now, in this statement, Dr. Hawks admits to crossing some professional boundaries. She admits to some issues with HIPAA, which is the disclosure requirement that all doctors have to live by. She also acknowledges taking some prescription medications from patients. Now, also in the aftermath of this interview, Whitney Baxley has retained Eric Bland, a Columbia-based lawyer who has gained statewide and really national acclaim for his involvement in the Murdoch Murders true crime saga, representing the families of uh, family members of Gloria Satterfield, one of the alleged victims of the Murdoch family. So Eric Bland has taken Baxley's case, which obviously is a big deal and could be a real problem for Lexington Medical Center. So. Once again, for the latest on this story and other news of interest in the Midlands region of the state and across South Carolina, please check out fitznews.com. And I would like to point out as we close out this segment that we have reached out on several occasions to Kim Hawks. As of this writing, we have not been able to get her to come on camera, but our open microphone is always on, always available to her, to her supporters. Uh, obviously, she's got a lot of those in the Midlands region of the state. She was a very popular physician here, has a lot of fans, has a lot of folks who really felt she was a good doctor, positively impacted their lives. Uh, so again, our microphone is always on and always open uh, to anyone with an intelligent take on this or any story we cover, but especially to Dr. Hawks. And we do hope at some point to have her on camera to share her side of the story.